Welcome to Devs Toolkit, the channel where DevEx sometimes increases productivity while at other times causes pain and suffering. Take a look at this. I will just say let there be an XRD and boom! Done. I just saved you half an hour of work. Is that not enough? How about saving you much more time by enabling you to define compositions as code with IntelliSense support in VS Code? Think about those hundreds or even thousands of lines of YAML you wrote before when you were writing compositions. Try to imagine how much time would be saved if you wrote code instead of YAML. If you had IntelliSense support in VS Code which allowed you to use autocomplete based on schemas from dependencies you choose. Think about the possibility to develop cross plane resources in a language of choice with full support from your favorite IDE, with commands to build, push, test, deploy the results of your work with CI-CD pipelines and all the other goodies we normally associate with the development lifecycle. Would that be something interesting? If you answered no to that last question, I can only assume that you're not familiar with Crossplane since I cannot imagine why would someone who is using it reject such an offer. If that's you, if you're new to Crossplane, stop watching this video right away and go through Crossplane tutorial instead. You'll thank me later. You'll see. On the other hand, if you did say yes, keep watching. I will show you the beginning, the beginning of something very, very interesting. And that something is DevEx or developer experience for Crossplane users or a way how to implement developer lifecycle for Crossplane or a way to develop crossplane compositions instead of doing whatever we were doing before, or you'll see. It's exciting and I want to jump straight into it. Now, before we continue, there is something very, very important you should be aware of. What I'm about to show you is in very, very early stage. As a matter of fact, I'm recording this video while what I'm showing is not even public. It's alpha or pre-alpha or pre-pre-alpha. By the time you watch this, it probably changed a lot. Commands might have changed. New features have almost certainly been added. It might have been turned upside down. Keep that in mind while watching. I'm showing you very, very, very early version of an idea or a proof of concept. This is the worst, the worst version of it you will ever see. Your experience should be very, very different and much better. Heck, if you try to follow my instructions, they're likely not going to even work because the solution likely changed drastically in the meantime. I'm probably making a mistake by sharing this with you, but I was too excited to wait any longer. Here we go. Let's do it. This will be a story that starts slow. It's one of those that the more we progress, the more interesting it gets. And it all starts with a project. If you would like to develop crossplane configurations with composite definitions, compositions and everything else, the first step is to initiate a new project and enter into it. Let's see what we got. We got the APIs directory where composite definitions and compositions will reside. Then there is functions where the actual code of compositions will be. Finally, there is upbound YAML, which is similar to configuration we were defining in crossplane YAML, but this time it is a different kind of resource, which we'll explore soon. The first major benefit is that now we have a standard. Instead of each of us trying to figure out how to organize crossplane projects, we have a standard way to do so. Standards are good, since they help us navigate other people's work more easily. Another big improvement is that now everything is integrated with VS Code. For example, we'll get IntelliSense with code completion, which helps tremendously, especially when working with potentially big compositions. We'll see that in action soon. For now, let's just open VS Code and let's take a look at upbound YAML that was auto-generated for us when we initialized the project. That file for now contains mostly the information that will help us later. That will change very soon. For now, feel free to update it to match your data like maintainer and repository, which should point to your upbound organization and the source, which should point to the Git repository where you might want to keep the project we created. Next, we should probably start thinking about dependencies that are most of the time providers and functions that we'll use in our compositions. 
Today, we are building a composition that should manage PostgreSQL servers in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. To do that, we'll need EC2 and RDS providers for AWS. Then there is DB for PostgreSQL for Azure. Finally, there is also SQL provider for Google Cloud. We'll also add the generic SQL provider that we can use for generic resources that are the same in all three hyperscalers. We should probably add the Kubernetes provider if you would like to have custom-made Kubernetes secrets. Finally, we'll add the status transformer function that might help us to propagate relevant statuses to claims. Those commands should have simplified management of dependencies, and we can see the outcome by taking another look at upbound YAML. We can see that all the dependencies have been added as depends on entries. Some of them are providers, while others are functions. Now, the next chapter in this story will spice it up. As I already mentioned, it gets better with time. Trust me. There are two main types of resources we need to define when trying to build services with Crossplane. There are composite resource definitions and compositions themselves. Right now, we are going to focus on the former. Typically, we will start the work by writing the composite resource definition or XRD. That's what ultimately becomes Kubernetes custom resource definition. That's what creates new interfaces the consumer of your services will interact with. That's what allows people to define claims. Now, to be honest, writing XRDs is tedious. And here's an example. Now, I won't go into details of that XRD. As I already mentioned today, I am assuming that you're familiar with Crossplane and more importantly, that you experience the pain of writing XRDs. Today, we'll take a different approach. Instead of writing XRDs directly, we'll approach the problem from a different angle. We'll define examples of what we feel our users should be defining as claims. In other words, we'll define the end user experience first and let the CLI do the heavy lifting of defining the XRD based on that experience or those experiences. We can define baseline claims or composite resources by executing up example generate. The command walks us through a series of questions and we'll use the answers to generate the initial claim or a composite resource. While that is great, I personally am not very fond of wizards. So instead, we'll execute the same command with the information provided as arguments. And there we go. We can see from the output that it generated my DB YAML file. So let's take a look at what we got. That is the base definition of a claim that we expect our users to define. Now, let's spice it up a bit by saying that they should be able to set the ID of the service. Since that database server should work in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, the user might want to specify which one should be used through match labels. And in this case, we'll say that the provider should be AWS and that the DB should be PostgreSQL, since at least in theory, there might be an option to use MySQL or some other database server as well. You'll notice that as we type, IntelliSense is showing us what's wrong by giving us warnings, errors, and suggestions. Nevertheless, that's only the tip of the iceberg. You see IntelliSense in its true glory later. We'll also define a few parameters like the version, set the size to medium, and the region to US East 1. What we did is fictitious. There is no kind SQL in our clusters. No one created that CRD. All we did was define what the users might expect to have as the interface when creating databases. Think of the phase we just went through as design. And now that we are done, we should convert all those examples into the actual XRD that will eventually become a Kubernetes CRD. So we'll execute up XRD generate with the path to our example and press the enter key. Let's take a look at what we got. That is a full composite resource definition that we would normally define ourselves. That's the tedious part we just avoided by creating it based on the example we expected users to write down when defining the claim. We inverted the order in which we do things. The goal was to focus on the end user experience and let the CLI generate the XRD that should support it. From now on, we could fine tune it if there are special cases that uh, were not covered. That will not be necessary in today's example. So let's move on and see how we can write compositions in a better way. If what we did so far generated even a mild excitement, what's coming next will be huge. There are 
two important parts to be aware of when defining compositions. There is the composition itself, or to be more precise, the boilerplate code that is necessary for any composition, and then there is code that defines which managed resources will be handled by a composition. Let's see how we can do both, starting with the boilerplate code by executing up composition generate, pass the path to the XRD we created earlier, and finishing with the dash dash path where the composition should be created. Let's see what we got. Hmm? Now, that was the boring part that has to be done, yet we did not have to spend any time getting it. The interesting part is that the composition we created contains not only the standard parts we always need to have, but it also figured out that in this case, we want to use the status transformer and auto ready functions, so it added those as well. Still, that was the boring part. The truly interesting stuff comes next. We are about to start working on the function that will assemble all managed resources we might want to include into the composition. We could do that by writing a ton of YAML, but we won't. That would be silly, since using functions is much more efficient and more flexible way to define what we need. Right now, by the time I'm recording this, we could use KCL or Python. By the time you're watching this, additional languages might be supported, and eventually a ton of them should be available. Since I prefer KCL and you don't have a say in it, at least not in this video, that's what we'll use today. And you should know that that's not the only option if KCL is not your thing. So, here it goes. We want a function to be generated with the name AWS and for the composition AWS YAML. The command did quite a few things. It inspected the dependencies in the project and, based on what we have there, downloaded schemas that will provide us with IntelliSense in VS Code. Through them, we'll get autocomplete and other nice things we are used to have when developing something. On top of that, it scaffolded the files we might need to develop the function that will define all the managed resources we want that composition to manage. Let's see what we got. Since, in this case, I chose to use KCL, it created, among other things, the main K file, which we should modify to suit our needs. Let's take a look at it. We can see that it imported the schemas for all the resources available in the dependencies we added earlier. Further on, it defined variables like OXR that contains the observed composite resource, uh, OCDS with observed composed resources, as well as DXR and DCDS with desired composite and uh, composed resources. Those might look confusing if you're not used to working with KCL functions, yet they are actually very, fairly easy, and we'll see them in action very, very soon. The important part is the items array. That's where we should add managed resources that should be managed by that composition. We'll see how to do that in a moment. For now, let's see how we can use one of the predefined variables. Let's say that we would like to extract the region we said will allow users to specify when creating claims. We can do that by defining the variable underscore region and for now, setting it to an empty string. Next, we'll create a conditional that checks whether spec and inside it parameters and inside it region is set. Those and all other params are available in OXR as the observed composite resource. If the region is indeed set, we are putting it as the value of the underscore region variable. Now, all that was pretty boring. What comes next is what makes a true difference and we can see it if we add the first resource to the items array. So, what shall we do? Let, let's say that we would like to add AWS Internet Gateway. In the past, we would need to find out the spec and start typing or copying and pasting parameters. That's not the case anymore. Now we have IntelliSense, and given that Internet Gateway is version v1 beta 1, we can type just that, followed with dots. And lo and behold, we got the list of all the resources that belong to v1 beta 1 and we can just start typing something like in there and select internet gateway and press the enter key of course next we should add metadata following the same process type meta or something like that select metadata and press the enter key we'll assign it the value of the underscore metadata lambda let's do a few more inside the spec let's type sp select spec type dot, followed with for, select for provider and assign it to 
well, it auto-completed it for us. Inside the provider, we should add the region with whatever the value of the region variable uh, we defined earlier is. We'll also set the VPC ID selector, match controller ref, to true. If you try to define and manage resources in the past, you must admit that IntelliSense alone is a massive help. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do an experiment. I'll write the code for all the resources and time it. Let's see how long that will take. There we go. I wrote all that in more or less 15 minutes. You will see the exact time somewhere on the screen. In the past, I would probably spend a few hours to accomplish the same result. So isn't that awesome? Now, let's say that we're finished developing the composition. The next thing we should do is build and publish the whole project. All that's left is to build and push it to the registry as version V001. And that's it. The whole project is now published as an OCI image that contains everything we might need to run it in a control plane. And this was the shortest section I ever put in a video. There is not much more to it. Build, push, you're done. There are many, many other goodies coming or by the time you watch this already available. We should be able to create ephemeral control planes where we could test our compositions before publishing them. We could have created a permanent production ready control plane where we would run the composition we built and allow our users to create claims. We should be able to see the analysis of the changes before applying them. We could have automated the whole process with workflows like, for example, GitHub Actions or Argo workflows or Jenkins or whatever we might be using. There are many, many other things we could have done and even more that's coming soon under the umbrella of development or developer experience. However, we are done for today. I will explore more in upcoming videos. In the meantime, visit Upbound and check out the new features yourself. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.